I didn't go for a drive out the road and I haven't really christened the shed yet, so a little one won't hurt. Ooh, a bit rusty on it. Hell yeah. Fresh day. Lines of mode. And I thought I'd make a video because it gets requested quite often and I kind of, not requested, I get questions a lot on the things I did to build this car and what was involved in it. Um, and I thought, bugger it, I'll bring it in here, jack it up on stands and pretty much go over the whole car, all the little things I did to it, all the modifications. Let's get it opened up and get this thing in here. Just like that, just like that. is up on the stance. Nice. Um, it's a bit dirty. It's been a while since I've given it a good wash. So, I'll pretty much go through as much as I can and try not to run, forget too much. Um, we may as well start at the arse and work our way forwards. Pretty much this thing is an XF, it's um, it's not XG or anything like that, so it's XF, so it had the, um, I think whatever you call it, mechanical fuel pump or whatever on the cross flow, or, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was mechanical, however it worked, it didn't have EFI, so to combat that, I bought a $200 XG ute, and pretty much ripped the fuel tank out, new fuel pump, put the fuel tank in, all the lines, because the XG is the same body as the XF, all the lines bolt up perfectly, which I'll show you once I get under the car. Um, I had to do the wiring for it to get the fuel pump to run. Now this just involved using, I forget what type of relay, it was like a four pin relay, which was triggered off ignition. Um, which once ignition was on it, it the relay would um, bloody react and then send your power to your fuel pump. So that is this wiring here. That just runs into the cab and goes under the seat. Um, originally I had a little relay around here, similar to this one. Um, which was the dedicated fuel pump one, but when I got my thermos done at the Auto Alex, they put in this um, bar of relays, which then they met, played with my stuff and cleaned it all up for me. Um, so, getting fuels all sweet. For engineers, it requires all the gauges on the dash to work, including the fuel level. To get the fuel gauge to work, it was a little bit tricky, or well, not tricky, but um, a little bit of stuff around because I've got the digital dash, which honestly probably made things easier. Um, all I had to do was buy a module which converted the resistance to get the um, float gauge in the XG tank to work with the um, signal for the Da uh, the XF dash. Now I installed this by myself the first time. The unit was two hundred dollars. Um, I installed it myself, and I couldn't get it to work. I could get the uh, the float to get a position, and then the gauge would only get to three quarters full when the tank was full or whatever, and it wouldn't work properly. And I ended up taking it to the shop which was probably the worst mistake I made. It ended up costing me $800 just to get a fuel gauge to work. 
when they offered to do it for 250 bucks fitted the first time, which I wish I did. But what I what was also an issue was the sensor on the float was buggered, which is why I couldn't calibrate it. So I reckon had that have not been an issue, I might have been able to pull it off myself. But yes, it would have been a lot cheaper if I just went with their first quote of 250 bucks fitted. So that's your fuel system done. That's pretty simple. Um, for the connections, as I said, all the XG lines will, I'll get my torch. All the XG lines will match the XF body. So they'll go straight in there, pop rivet, uh, pop rivet them on and you'll be sweet. Um, come up through the top here, you've got the fuel rail and that's just got some fuel hose clamps um, connecting the XG lines on. Um, pretty much that's all I did, I just cut off the clip fittings on the XG and just so I could use the hose. Um, which it hasn't come off yet and I know I've done a lot of things with this car including revving the shit out of it so it works pretty well um, and yeah obviously um, I can't remember if the uh, used to have a uh, no it was carby it didn't have a return line so you'll have to run the return line which it already has an extra hole here so you can just run the line straight through there. If not, you can just drill another one if you need to. Um, this line here is the breather um, for memory. That runs off one of these and it goes into the charcoal canister, which I'll show that location um, once I get under the car. Um, that's about it for the fuel system. The fuel system's nice and easy. Um, when I first got the car, I decided to put a EL EF wagon diff under it. Um, this was just because I had 28 spline axles and the uh, handbrake and brake setup was a lot nicer to um, put under it. It was, not, uh, it was really nice and simple. Uh, so we'll, we'll get under and have a look. All right. Uh. Oh, this is gonna kill my neck. All right. So for the diff, I had to. This is standard, and then it comes off, and then I've got this, just a T, and then I've got these lines um, made up at my shop, local, I think it was like ABS or something. So that's just hard lines. And then there's, um, oh, I just got the banjos put onto them. I'm pretty sure they're called um, banjo fittings or Somewhat that I can't remember, but they just connect up to the caliper. Um, I did that, and then to get the handbrake to work, it was relatively I did a little bit dodgy, but it still manages to work. Um, so the main benefit with running the ELEF wagon diff is that it um, only has the one handbrake cable which links both um, calipers so it just makes it easy because on the XFs it has um, two cables running across going towards the into the center of the car so all I did for that was I just used the um, I'm pretty sure that's factory XF and this passed roadworthy back when I got the car done nearly four years ago um, this is just the factory ELEF 
cable which runs back towards the handbrake setup and then this bracket I can't even remember if that's off the um, standard XF but all I did was put the cable in and then just put a couple of tack welds on the bracket to stop the cable from falling out and it's never been an issue and it's never really failed um, so yeah, that's how the diff is all set up to work um, obviously I'm running this thing pretty low people often ask or not pretty low, just a nice amount of low. Um, people ask what I've done for that sometimes, and number one, remove your bump stop. You might hit it occasionally. Um, but these are just flipped XG springs. So I think the bottom three is standard XF, and then this is the top leaf out of a XG pack or second biggest leaf out of the XG flipped upside down and then I've got another leaf pack, a leaf out of the XG leaf flipped upside down and yeah that's all um, bolted together. Flipping leaves I know people have mixed opinions about. The reason I did it was I wanted to be able to run low without resetting um, my springs because I was having issues with it tramping quite often so by flipping them it kind of loads the springs up a bit and the thing's just like a go-kart so I can dump the clutch and it, yeah it doesn't tramp or anything like that and um, it works quite well this exhaust bracket um, is custom hence why the exhaust sits up so high um, I think there's only about 10 or 5 mil on top of the exhaust because of Again, this was something I did when I um, got it engineered. I wanted to get it up nice and high. Um, that's just all custom made exhaust. Bump stops are being cut. So, if you can see that, the bump stops have had about, I don't know, 25 mil cut off them. Um, standard shocks, they're probably stuffed. I probably should get some new ones. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So, leaves diff um, and the diff gears it's running 323s which um, absolutely pump smoke with second gear and the um, T5 gearbox and it's nice because you don't have to um, go out of second to kind of really get some your wheels turning because we all know that they hate third gear Especially when I've never spent the money to do a strength in T5 or anything like that. Um, yeah, so, and then obviously it locks up because it's mini spooled. So, I was going to go LSD and all that, but it's had the mini spool in it for two years now, daily driving. So, I don't know, it's held up pretty well, but that'll all be changing soon. Um... We will continue down. Again, there's the fuel lines. Fuel lines just pop riveted in and tucked up so that they won't get hit by belt slip. Yeah, keep going down. Ugh. And um, these guys might be wondering what tail shaft. This is a XH steel shaft. Um, yeah, I did that. I thought I was going to have to get shit shortened and all that stuff, but I kind of stitched myself up. They charged me for shortening when all they did was remove the um, big balancer and then just rebalance the actual shaft itself. So if you're gonna do this, um, obviously your tail shaft lengths will depend on what mounts you're gonna use. I'm running Casamane Rod Shop mounts. Um, I, I went that way just as a, for me at the time, I didn't really know what I was doing. So I was like, eh, they, um, there was just one less thing I had to do and I knew I could just get the motor sitting in. The one thing I did research though was 
between rod shop mounts. You can also use standard XG mounts in, I forget which combination, um, or I think they're called tough mounts. Tough mounts, when I bought these, it's going back two years now, tough mounts didn't drop the motor down 40 mil, which meant I had to cut the bonnet bracing and the engineer I was going through said I wasn't allowed to cut the bonnet. So that's why I went to the rod shop mounts. This meant I could drop the motor down an extra 40 mil and not have to cut my bonnet and then pretty much walk through engineers. So yeah, that was um, my motivation, but for my, uh, not motivation, my reason for going with rod shop mounts. Um, they're pretty cool. They are pretty, a little bit stiff, but that's kind of just the style of bushing that they are. If I could do thing is, things again, and what was suggested by the engineer was that I'd you I should convert it back to like standard rubbers or something, just because the vibration is pretty nuts. But overall, it works really well, and it's still passable. Um, yeah, up here, I only did this recently, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's a bit of a notch out for where the shifter pops through this makes a massive difference between getting the gearbox in and out i should have done it when i first put the car in um obviously we've got the gearbox here this is a xh ute diff uh <laughs> this is a xh um t5 now a couple of people have asked with what i did for mounting um, I don't know if this is standard XF or standard E series. Um, I'm pretty sure it's standard XF cross member. Don't quote me on it though. But regardless, you're gonna drill extra holes in it. So what I did to make it work um, was I slotted these holes. So they've been slotted. And you can see I brought the slot just down to here. Um, on both sides. Now, with the rod shop mounts, I found out that the motor, um, uh, with the rod shop mounts and barrel combination, the T5 come back about 25 mil. So that's why I was able to um, use a standard cross member and just slot the holes. Now, this is currently running the XH, which has got this single bolted style rubber. But for your E-series, um, earlier E-series or whatever, that's why I've also got these other, this other set of holes. So I can also bolt EL or, um, or standard XF 5-speed into it. So yeah, that's all I did for the cross member and it works good and I haven't had any issues with it yet, which is nice. Um, yeah, so that combined with the XH steel shaft with the balancer taken off it, that big puck has been pressed off. That all works good and I haven't had any issues. Um, under here, that's just a, another thing with the handbrake setup. It's been just looped around and adapted to the XF. Um, Obviously got the exhaust here. That's uh, just a high flow muffler, a single hot dog at the end, and then a hundred cell high flow cart with a flex in it. The flexes make a massive difference and I highly recommend them. Um, which then bolt up to a set of pacemaker extractors. I got these for 50 bucks and they're absolutely rooted so I just welded some holes up on them and fixed them up. Um, what else have we got? So, to um, to get the X, uh, whatever T5 you use, whether it be XH or E series, you've got to use a AU bell housing. Now, um, now I don't know people say they're tricky to get, but I managed to find one in Bendigo pretty easy. Um. So, yeah, need AU bell housing, and then you can use E-series, but the difference 
is that E-Series you won't get these bottom four bolts to bolt up and again that was a requirement with engineers um, that it needed to bolt up um, I'm still running a cable style clutch so you will have to drill a hole in the sump for the cable to be able to go through now I did this on the car um, underneath it because I didn't even think about it so I just banged a hole through with a drill um, yeah that's that the clutch that I'm running is a Sunbury cush button ceramic clutch they're about 600 delivered and every day of the week would 100% recommend them I thrash this shit out of this clutch and well, I've never really had any issues with it at all um uh, one thing I forgot to cover with the gearbox um, and getting that set up with the Barrett is that you, along with the AU bell housing, you'll want an E-Series or XH flywheel um, and then obviously the clutch will be suited for E-Series or XH um, which is what I bought from Sunbury clutches. The biggest thing I found with um, getting the flywheel onto the barra crank is to clean the threads on the barra crank really well I run a tap into it and to clean the threads out and then brake cleaned them as well um, and you'll also want to run new bolts which will um, make a big difference as well the first time uh, when I swapped the other motor out I forgot to get new bolts and I just rushed it didn't clean the threads and my fly will ended up coming loose so yeah, you'll want new bolts um, from the Ford dealership or wherever you want to source them. They have a thread adhesive on them. Um, I can't remember if I used B-series or E-series bolts. I'm pretty sure it was B-series uh, B um, manual flywheel bolts. But the one way to check that is... Um, without the flywheel on the crank, wind the bolt all the way in, measure the gap between the crank and the um, inside face of the bolt head and um, if the flywheel is thinner than that distance you measured you won't want to use them bolts because they'll bottom out in the crank before they apply pressure to the um, flywheel which m means your flywheel will the bolts will feel tight but the flywheel won't actually have any tension on it so that's a pretty big thing that you don't want to stuff up because you don't want a flywheel come through the tunnel yep just thought I'd touch on that also although the bolts do if you do source them from Ford have a um, factory adhesive powder on them I still just put a, a really tiny amount of blue Loctite on them just to keep them extra done up. Cheers, enjoy. I would recommend if you are gonna do this swap, just straight up spend the time and money going T56 or go um, like AU T5 and do a hydraulic setup. It'd be so much nicer than um, running the cable. I've ripped the pedal out of mine um, and I'll show you that once I get up in the cab, but. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain. A hydraulic setup would be a lot nicer. Um, pretty much nothing really changed on the uh, uh, the wiring for the gearbox because mine was already manual. That's my oxy sensor for the exhaust. The tune on this doesn't actually require one um, because the computer's been just flashed. So. Yeah, it's kind of just was sitting there for when I passed it through engineers. Um, uh, from that, clutch cable goes around through there, up and in to the um, cab. All the suspension is just dead standard, just cut bump stops. Um, yeah, and that's pretty happy you sway bar there's two things you can do with the sway bar you can get a custom one made because your issue is going to be here hitting on the sump um with the rod shop mounts so you can already see that's 
with the car jacked up off the ground, I'm pretty much, I'm touching the sump. So it will hit the sump. Um, but what you can do, what you can do is get a custom sway bar made up that has a notch here, which will clear that sump. Or to make this issue a little bit better, because to be honest, it's not that big of a deal. Um, what I did was made spaces up to push my um, sway bar downwards. So what I did for that was pretty much made a big block up out of some, uh, I think it's about 30 mil of spacing. I built these in uh, out of 10 mil plate and welded them together and at the um, time of engineers I think these were nearly 50 mil <clears throat> because of the ride height I was at and then when I dropped the car it pushed my sway bar downwards too much so I ended up chopping off um, 10 mil so what these do these have threads in the top which bolt to the body and then another set of th threads which then allow the uh, yeah so if you can see these three bolts um, go up through the pad on the on the body and then these two this bolt here is actually threaded into the uh, spacer itself so it's a bit of a pain in the ass and if I had the, an extra 500 bucks to spend on it then I'd probably do the sway bar but at this time it works so um, I don't really feel the need to change it but suspension wise that's about the only real thing that I've had to change um, there's the rod shop mount as you can see they fit pretty nice up in there um, now do, 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 do. what else we got we've got an AC delete pulley I'm not running any AC at all um, so that's through Clarko's performance um, it was really nice bit of gear and just bolted straight on made it a lot of a real easy job um, at the moment uh, another thing that was challenging was the heater heater um heater lines so that is this custom so i used a combination of um e series and ba heater lines and cut them up and that's what this tube is here it runs around behind the head and tucks in really tight it is meant to be up on the um, heater core, but my heater core's got a split in it and was leaking, so that's why I've blocked it off. And it's just got a bit of um, tube looping it. So that was a, a pretty tricky job. Um, yeah, but it, it's up there at least. Um, while we're under here, I don't know if you can see. But there's a T piece there, which is how you get your oil pressure gauge to work for the the barrel computer and the um, the gauge on the dash. So pretty much, yeah, it's just T'd. So the oil pressure for the barrel computer and um, the original cross flow one goes straight into that. Um, and. Obviously the the barrel's temp sensor for the computer is in the back of the head. Now you gotta be real careful when you um are putting the motor in and out because I snapped one of them when I first put it in, which yeah, it was a bit of a pain in the butt because it's above the bell housing and in the tunnel it's pretty tight so you don't really wanna snap them off because if you do you pretty much it's pretty tricky to get the sensor out even with the bow housing and everything off so yeah try avoid doing that um standard steering setup now the alternator i uh had to get wired up with the loom that i got it wasn't um oh how'd that all work yeah 
Yeah, the alternator didn't have anything to do with the loom, so that was one of the things I got the auto elect to do that cost me like 50 or 60 bucks. It was just something I'm not really electrically minded, so that's something I wanted someone else to do it and do it right for me. Um, when I had the motor out on this, I actually wire tucked the whole engine bay as best I could, and I put about 30 meters or now probably 15 meters of wire into the bay and ran all my wiring through this cross member underneath the motor as well as um, under the engine here which you can see so that's all my wiring which is why the bay is pretty tidy up top um, and yeah I think that is about it for underneath. This is my water washer bottle setup. Um, that's just a custom made aluminium tank with the um, little pump out of um, the standard washer pump. Now it lasted about five seconds because I don't think it has the, the balls to be able to pump the water through up to the windows but it lasted long enough to get it through engineers um yeah but i will we'll fix that one day and to mount that tank i just welded two little tabs because i've got a um a, a bull bar mount in there and it's that came with the car and it just had the bull bar cut off it as a bit of extra support by the looks of it because i had a few friends that have had xfs and stuff and it never came with that bar but that bar is actually what saved this car when the previous owner, I'm pretty sure he crashed it. And um, yeah, that bar saved the red support from getting done. All right, while we're here, um, this is the radiator. It's a E-Series aluminum three core, just Chinga spec, GHI or something like that. Honestly, I've never had an issue with it. It's the second one I've put in. The first one lasted about a year and a half. Um, but that was my fault for, I didn't do an engine flush or anything. And I used the wrong corn. And I think it honestly corroded the shit out of it because it just started leaking in weird spots. So when I got this one, I went and seen the radiator shop and got everything that um, I needed that they recommended to keep the aluminium nice and healthy and that's an organic coolant and to flush your motor and everything out at least two times so it was pretty tricky to get this three core in i had to obviously i got rid of the ac more so for at the times it was looks but it if you want to run the three core it'd probably be a bit trickier to run the e-series ones so obviously that front could um i think uh, what they call it condenser or something for the um all the ac stuff i've pulled out and um that's yeah just the radio there and then that is the standard xf radiator mounts with a bit of five mil flat bar welded onto it and then the standard um uh top half of the mount which i drilled the spot welds out and then just shifted them over about 30 odd mil and then i just got the rubbers and cut them up with a stanley knife to get them to fit the bigger radiator um so that's the the top of the radiator um horn just mounted that straight in these are the top mounts for the radiator so they're just tucked in there just pick up that standard bolt they're just a bit of flat bar as well um, and just cut the standard brackets down um, yeah and then I made up them little rubber washers just to give it a bit of um, oh there's a better shot of it so yeah there's the mount there for the radiator just chopped up standard ones um, the E-Series radiators will come with a little, um, will come with an extra bit of length on these tabs, which is how they normally mount. I just cut them off as a part of the remounting process. Bit of a pain in the ass when you need to change radiator, but 
it's nice having the three core in it. Um, so on front of the three core radiator, I'm running E series thermos. Um, they're all wired in. I ended up getting the auto elect to do that, but to get them to run, they're not based. They're not matched up with the computer. That is something that you can and I would do if I was you. Um, wire them up to the standard ECU so that you can actually just set a temperature and that they come on through the computer versus I've got this on a, um, I think it's like Davis Craig or Craig Davis, I can't remember, uh, switch. And just a um, thematic switch, which is mounted. Uh, down in there and what that does that has a dial on it and you can adjust the temperature and then it has a probe which just goes into the top hose after the thermostat so you can see down under there and that just reads the temp another thing I'd do differently you can get these in a um, a digital version which is um, has a nicer sensor it's wired up a bit nicer and it's all digital and you can set your degrees and it's a lot more accurate than running this setup I've had issues with that um, dial or, or I think it was actually the probe stuffed up on me and wasn't um, I think one of the the actually the wire from the probe crimped and it wouldn't um, give information back to its little sensor thing um, actually, I'm pretty sure they run a heat spring in them. Either way, it didn't work anymore. So yeah, if you if you're gonna do that, go the digital option and get that wired in. It'd be a lot nicer. To get the um, gauge to work in the car, I had a thermostat housing which I drilled a hole in, welded an aluminium bung into, and ran the standard temp sensor off the. Um, cross flow which then made my da uh, dash work and when I put this motor in it I um, decided to just get rid of that to make it look a bit cleaner because I run a um, a scan gauge tool on the dash which tells me the temperatures off the computer straight away so I get a digital reading of what the engine's running at so I don't really need the um, the gauge on the dash but you will for engineers purposes um, now this motor is the uh, second motor that's been in it this is a BF um, petrol motor um, originally it was a BA gas motor 100% go gas motor that thing I'm kicking myself for going um, BF petrol it's just I don't know the gas motor just loved it a lot more um, and obviously I was running the gas motor on dedicated petrol so what you do for that I literally just bought a gas motor for the block and then a petrol motor complete all the manifolds, injectors, um, petrol loom just a whole lot off the petrol motor straight onto the gas block um, there, and another thing with that too I'm pretty sure the dipsticks are different too so make sure you swap that over as well um, yeah and you can even if you want for more power using FG plastic plenum which a lot of people seem to do but I didn't feel like going that crazy on it so yes um, yeah back with the BF petrol now which yeah it's not as nice um, yeah thermos all sorted now the radiator hose has just been chopped up that's pretty standard I think down the bottom I'm running a XGE um, coolant hose this is pretty tricky because the fitment of everything this hose here is I don't even know what it's off I just chopped it up off something that fitted um, and then I don't know if you'll be able to see but there's actually an inch um, stainless pipe that runs below the thermo fans and what this does this is the inlet for the radiator off the um, the coolant reservoir 
because it's E-series and I put the coolant res on the other side. It's got this crossover pipe which runs up above the intake and then to the coolant bottle. Now, back when I built this car, I didn't have a TIG and if I go back now, I would have bought either a different radiator or I would have just got the E-series, cut that side, uh, that, um, that hose fitting off, welded it up and then just bought another hole in this side of the tank and it would have made my life a shitload easier but um yeah i kind of it was just what i was doing at the time and you learn these things as you go go along so for the coolant reservoir this is just xg i think i've got some little tabs under here which bolt up to the body and then i made this pretty wacky looking bracket out of um out of just 10 mil rod and then just made up a heap of tabs one picks up the air intake which you can see there this is just tabs of your friend with shit like this mounting it um and then the overflow just drains still in the same spot just runs out into the wheel arch so yeah that's the cooling system um obviously put in new thermostat i've for some reason gone through like two um that's a big thing um again here's probably a better look of i think this was either fg or it started um it started as a ba heater hose line and then i welded fg or BA ends onto it, uh, E series ends onto it to kick that 90 degree up behind the motor. Now, when the heater core went, I decided that I'd just cap it off at the motor on each side, and it was shit. I could not control the temperature of the motor, and that's why I decided to do the whole loop around and um, fix all that up which made a massive difference so yeah do that now along with the clarko's um pulley which you can see down there the delete pulley the motor's also got a 20 percent underdrive kit on it this was more so to just try save the power steering pump because they're notorious for blowing up when you're hanging off the wheel a fair bit um so yeah that just involves um a bigger harmonic balancer or smaller i should say i can't remember which way it goes yes i can't remember either way it slows down the whole um pulley setup um yeah so that's that all battery and that's the same um another big thing was the power steering connection again i don't know what a lot of people do but i've just got this 90 degree custom fitting made up by gb hydraulic and shep so that fitting there it just adapts to into the um barra um power steering pump thread and then just runs a hose down over to the um, standard XG um, steering box. Yeah, I've never really looked into whether what the pressures and all that are of them. I've gone through about two power steering pumps, but then at the same time, I don't really drive the car that nice, so I don't know if that's just me or. Yeah, but it seems to work and I've never really had any massive issues with it considering the way I do drive it. Um, yeah, so there's that. That is where the uh, charcoal canister is located. This leads into the um, bottom of the intake manifold. And what it does, it burns off the... Um, fuel gases and stuff like that from that are coming from the fuel tank because it has a breather line which, which runs to that computer was just mounted in um 
uh, what else is there? The computer was relatively easy to run the motor. I just bought a standalone loom. The standalone loom involved like power to the computer. Um, shit, I can't. It comes with a fly-by wire pedal, so I had to run that in through the dash, um, which I'll show you in a minute. And there's a few other little wires like constant power for the ECU um, power to the coils off ignition. Uh, to the coil off ignition. Um, now I actually stuffed that up when I did it. I could get the car to kick over but it wouldn't fire. And what it was getting, um, what I actually done was when I hooked it up to my ignition, I didn't go onto um oh i hooked it up to accessories so it'd get a crank of power and then once i went over to hit ignition it would cut spark or wouldn't give the power to then create spark so once i fixed that and put it onto ignition power the thing fired straight up and yeah went mint um We'll go have a look at the pedal setup and everything. So in here we've just got the AU dash. Um, that was actually in the car when I first bought it years ago. To do all this, I had the dash out. Um, and pretty much what I did, I ran the wiring loom in through the hole where the computer's sitting. The wiring comes through, the dash drops down. Um, actually, I'll take that back. All I had to do was run, yeah, a couple of wires for the ignition signals and stuff to the computer. And then um, the fly-by wire ped uh, pedal wiring had to come through. Um, and that was about it, but that I pulled the dash out to kind of tuck it all that behind there nicely I also have an OBD2 plug which um, Comes through so I had to get that through as well, which was a little bit tricky This is the scan gauge tool. I was talking about this normally um, That plugs into my OBD2 port and then this just sits up here like that and that gives me like a um, current reading on my um, temperature of coolant which is pretty much the only thing I really worry about with it which it doesn't really get hot all right so obviously I've got an electric pedal and the fly by wire pedal down here um, this is just made up by myself with a custom bracket so that's just a heap of bits of flat bar and um, some three mil steel now the tricky thing was i wanted to get the pedals at a nice height that it felt like i was pushing down on it and not uh, pushing it forward not pushing the pedal down which i've noticed sometimes people mount their pedals and they sit way down here which I just couldn't do. I wanted to be able to kind of, I don't know, have it feel dead standard. Now to do this, I have chopped out the frame around the heater, um, around the venting, which allowed me to get that bracket fully up there and then actually pick up the standard bolt holes for the original accelerator pedal. Um, yeah, so that worked out pretty nicely now over this side you can see I'm running the standard pedal box still which has been an issue before and if you look closely you can see I've actually welded a 5 mil thick plate onto the pedal box um, to just try to stop this pedal from bending um, and pulling out of the box again, which happened to me not that long ago. 
So yeah, that's about it under there. Um, obviously the fuel pump wiring all runs through here and it all goes up into the, the bung in that corner of the car. Yeah, it's weird going over the car. I can't really, I hope I haven't missed too much. Um, but yeah, it's, it sounds relatively simple, but yeah, it's, it's not a bad swap to do. It's pretty easy when you've got the, the right stuff and I'd do it a lot quicker now with the knowledge and setup that I do have. Doing it in the driveway made it a little bit tricky, but it also made it a, a very fun time to, um, putting it together and kind of at that age having mates and everything around the driver it was an absolute ripper project to do and I'd highly support um, doing it because you'll have a ball but um, yeah to kind of get the car running diff, fuel, cross member for the gearbox and then just a standalone loom, engine mounts, making a few brackets for a three core radiator and just standard thermos um, yeah it, it's not too hard of a thing to do um, and then obviously once I got the car running I kind of went through and anything that was cross flow related to the motor which there wasn't too much because it was carbide anyways um, I just kind of chopped it out and taped it up and um, yeah and just tucked it away but um, that is about it and for engineers i just had to get a weighbridge um ticket i had to get a four-way gas analysis on the exhaust which with the gas motor because it was really clean passed really well um did that and the main thing with getting the engineer cert was having um standard fuel system and relatively everything pretty standard um yeah so go have some fun with it and i hope this answers a few questions and allowed people to kind of see the the things that um, make this car work so cheers <coughs> and if you made it to the end of the vid um yeah subscribe i'll be doing a lot more videos in the future and if you want to kind of see what I'm doing when I'm not posting I've also made an Instagram account uh, under Forest Fabrications so you can check that out as well I try to post on that just when I uh, am kind of too busy to kind of sit down on, on the computer for a long time and sit there editing so yeah thanks for watching Catch you.